All right, everybody. This is Austin at the Best I Can Afford Antiques channel, making my fourth video of the day. And we're going to talk about something pretty special. I got this tiny little piece of Limoges. Uh, Limo Limoges? Uh, I'm, I'm really not sure. I'd like to think that I'm pronouncing it correctly. Chances are, I'm definitely not. <laughs> I have looked up a lot of stuff about this company. Um, I, I did not remember to look up the pronunciation of this company. So, I'm an idiot. That's fine. I accept it. I think my wife would too. If she heard me say that, she'd say, yeah, all right. All right. As long as you're fessing up to it. So, Limoges? Limoges? Uh, maybe Limoges. Uh, that does sound more France. French, doesn't it? <laughs> France. France. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay. Okay. Elite Limoges, France, with a little guy with a S and M next to him, I believe. Um, if I remember what the letters are, it's pretty tiny, honestly. I've got my phone zoomed in a little bit here. But uh, that mark should date this dish to um, 1896 to 1900. So this should be a 120-year-old plate at least. And I will zoom back out from the mark and you can see the whole bottom of the dish. It's just a little fella. It's just a... Just uh, 18 by 12 inches, I think, is the exact measurement of this particular dish. And we're going to have to be careful. We've got a lot of different expensive stuff sitting around each other. I believe this plate holder is going to work out for our purposes here. Oh, the bottom of the dish is very uneven, so this is going to take a little bit of effort on my part, I think. Okay, you know what? We're going to let it rest like that. We're going to scooch it back a little bit. Not too much. I'm going to test this balance here. I don't like that at all. You know what? You know what we're going to do? We're going to set this on this nice soft cardboard is what we're going to do. <clears throat> okay. So. This is a hand-painted Limoges piece featuring two pheasants, I believe. And I believe it was a game service tray. Uh, I don't know if you ever would have used this as a uh, actual service or not. It seems like the hand-painting would, uh, you know, not benefit you. But it does look like the painting is under a glaze. <clears throat> I like to do some close-ups here. You can see visible brush strokes <clears throat> in the uh, in the paint underneath there. You can see there those blades of grass and stuff are painted. Obviously, there's a little bit of buildup in the. Um, I'm looking right at the thigh in the glare behind uh, behind the um, in the second pheasant. I'm sorry, in the back one there. You see where it's kind of built up just a little bit? You can see there's a little bit of a... It's almost like impasto. So yeah, this is hand painted. They appear to be just the vague remnants of a tiny signature right there maybe. <clears throat> I'm really not positive. It almost looks like an H or something, but... But yeah, this is a 120-year-old, uh, probably to serve birds, you know. There was a lot of pheasant hunting and stuff going on, especially with the nobility. Um, King Louis of France owned a porcelain factory in Limoges. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. So, you'll see a lot of different marks for Limoges. Uh, Limoges, uh, <laughs> whatever it is you'll see a lot of different marks for that and that's because it's actually just a town in France it's not one company there were several kilns there were several uh, studios um, there were some that only decorated plates and stuff there were some that only made them um, so yeah you'll see a lot of different Limoges uh, marks 
And uh, I probably should have Googled how to say that instead of switching back and forth the entire time. But, um, so yeah, King Louis, uh, I think in 1796 or 1798, bought a kiln in uh, Limoges and supplied his court with fine china from that town. Uh, they had a special kind of clay, um, kaolin clay, K-O-L-I-N, if I'm remembering right. Uh, so they found a special type of clay in this town, and they used it to make pottery, porcelain, uh, ceramics. And here we are, looking at just a gorgeous gold gilt edge game service tray. And uh, I have to tell you, the largest Limoges dish I've seen that it sold was uh, 15 inches. And it sold for $825, I believe. Now, I'm going to not lie to you a second time here. I have not found a Limoges, Limoges uh, tray this large anywhere. Uh, as far as I can tell, I've got one of the biggest pieces they ever made in that town in France. And could it be more glorious? I mean, you do see how great that is, right? My goodness. Not only did an excellent artist work on this, but if you were trying to make a fancy thing, could you even conceive of a way that you could have made a fancier thing than this. And I'd like you to note the edges. So I don't really want to have my camera over it, but do you see uh, this, this isn't just an evenly spaced border. Like this chunk is larger than this chunk is larger than this chunk, you know? So I mean, you don't have the, uh, the protrusions sticking out at the same places on each side of the plate. Do you see what I mean? Like, there's one over here, but there's not one up over at that corner. So, I mean, the whole border is uneven. I mean, it's a fantastic thing. They didn't try for symmetry at all. They just tried for excellence, which, I mean, I suppose we'll find a way to respect that. So, yeah. Oh, my goodness. I think, I think this is probably worth at least a $1,000. I think a uh, 120 year old from France piece of Limoges, Limoges, uh, <laughs> I swear, I swear I will figure out how to say it. I should have done it before making this piece. I am, I am a silly goose and I apologize. But yeah, I mean, could this be more excellent? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you could do. You know, now I'm noting the, um, the really light greens back here. And some really light yellow here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that. Very light yellows, almost like a little spray or mist. And now I see there's like just a little bit of that all over the place. Something down here. I think I'm blocking the light as I put the camera in it. Just all sorts of beautiful, subtle colors. Just little splashes everywhere. It's like these almost look like flowers, but I mean the colors they chose to use the uh, the muted undertones for sure. And then you have these bright, vibrant birds. But then to surround all of that with just solid gold, you know what I mean? And this probably actually is, you know, 22, 24 carat, something like that. Uh, gold dust that they put in a a glaze or a paint or what have you so if you ever see gold on the outside of your dishes you know make sure you try not to touch that portion of it because that seems like it wears off pretty quickly especially when compared with like other decoration gold gilding seems like it comes comes right off of ceramics and porcelain and stuff so so be very careful of that <clears throat> well everybody this is Austin at the Best I Can Afford Antiques channel. I paid $104 for this. I won it at auction. I, uh, I thought I was going to have to fight harder for it, but here we are. $100? I, uh, I think this is a tremendous thing. I think this is probably 
probably worth a fair, fair bit of money, but, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe someone who knows more about the marks and stuff could let me know, you know, if you see anything fishy or anything, but, I mean, for this to be such a beautiful hand-painted giant piece and so well executed, I'm really not doubting at all that this is Limoges or Limoges. Uh, so, I mean, tell me if you have any doubts, you know, let me know if I'm making a mistake here. I'd much rather, I'd much rather be disappointed and less ignorant <laughs> than, than happy and dumb. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's my policy here. And, uh, you know, just let me know if you think what I have here is actually incredible. Because I think, I think it probably is. I think this is one of my finest pieces. Um you know, right up there with some of my cloisonne pieces, uh, right up there with the lamp. Uh, yeah, I think, I think this is a tremendous thing. I think we've done very well, and, uh, hopefully we can all find something this good or, or this hope-inspiring. <laughs> Let's just keep going, huh? Let's see what we get. Let's see what else we can find that everyone else seems to ignore, minus the, uh, you know, seemingly one other bidder who fought me on this, but wouldn't go up to one hundred and five dollars. So I don't know, I don't know what his questions were, but when I saw it, I thought, you know, I think we could safely go up to three hundred dollars on this and and not feel bad about it. But yeah, just like the lamp, you know, nobody fought me. Maybe maybe I don't have an eye for quality. I I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Tell me what I should think about all this. If you haven't seen my videos before, there's a glimpse of the lamp that I'm talking about. And yeah, this is Austin at the Best I Can Afford Antiques channel. Always trying to find something interesting, something beautiful, something artistic, something handmade, something funny, something weird. But this time, we found something treasure. We got solid gold on our table today. <laughs> this is Austin at the Best I Can Afford Antiques channel. Uh, like, share, comment, subscribe, I'd be happy to hear from you. And, uh, you know, I like to think that we're all going to be friends around here, so, so feel free to just drop by and start hanging out with the people I hang out with. I'm okay with it. Be happy to see you.